Hello, Math Study students. Today we're going to talk about 21C.1, Rates of Change. So in our previous lessons, we did, um, we talked about how the derivative gives us the slope. So if I've got a curve like this, if, at the, if I take the derivative at this point, my slope is increasing. If I take a derivative at this point, it's called a stationary point. It goes from increasing slope to decreasing slope. And um, so the change is, is zero. And here I have a decreasing slope. So the derivative is negative. Okay, and we're going to be applying the, the use of derivatives in word problems in just a minute. So we've been using this notation here, f prime of x, and this means derivative. Another way of writing derivative is you might see it like this, dy dx. This means the change of y with respect to x. You'll all often see derivatives written in this way. This is saying, so like if my graph was like this, where this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis, this is saying the change of y with respect to the change of x. And we're going to be using this, but instead of y and x, we're going to have other letters. And I'm going to show you an example, a few examples. So if like I, my function was c of x, this represents the cost of, make, of production of something with respect to time, or this would be the change of the cost with respect to time. Well, let's move on. Um, I have a better example. So what if I was talking about distance traveled over time? Now, most textbooks in calculus, I don't know why they use the variables s and t, because s really looks like a 5, doesn't it? And t could be confused with a plus symbol, but I'm going to use it anyways just because I want you to get used to this. Um, whenever I write the variable t, I always put a little curl on it so I don't confuse it with a plus symbol. An s, you just have to try your best. Don't write sloppy. Okay, this is not a 5. This is an s. Okay, so if I wanted to take the derivative of this function, I would write ds dt, the change of distance with respect to time. Now you might, anybody who's ever been in a car would know that some people have talked about this thing called speed or velocity. So if you're talking about the speed or the velocity, you're talking about the change of distance with respect to time. So anybody who's ever been in a car might be interested in finding the derivative of a function for distance. So. Um, we don't have any of these problems in, uh, in this lesson, but if I took a derivative of the derivative, the change of speed is called acceleration. So the double derivative is acceleration. We don't have examples like that in this lesson, but if you're curious, the change of speed is acceleration. Now let's do an example. Okay. So you've got this function. Um, the distance s meters of a car over t seconds is given by this function, okay? s represents the meters, t represents time. Okay, so calculate when, um, when the velocity is going to be zero. Okay, so when is the velocity going to be zero? Uh, well, we need to make the derivative equal to zero. So, um, so what's the derivative of this function? I can write it like this, right? The velocity is equal to the derivative of this function. So that's equal to 10 minus, okay, 2 gets multiplied times the 0.5. Power decreases by 1. Okay, and 0.5 times 2 is, uh, is, is 1. So we have 10 minus t. And there is my function. I should have written it like this. That's
Okay. Um, another way to have written this would have been ds dt equals 10 minus t. That would have been another way to write it. Okay. Now, um, in IB, they'll want you to write the units, and the units for this is um, meters per second squared, right? So, because this function is meters per t, t seconds, so the derivative is meters per second squared. Velocity is meters per second squared, okay? Or the distance per the time squared, okay? Calculate when the velocity is going to be zero. Okay, so when is the velocity going to be zero? Well, I have to make the derivative equal to zero, right? So I'm going to say zero equals, oh, not, let's not use that one. Zero, we're making the derivative equal to zero, so zero equals 10 minus t. All right, well, the velocity is going to be zero if I uh, make t equal to 10. Okay, and uh, given the units, it's going to be seconds, right? Okay, don't forget those units. Okay, next, calculate the displacement of the car from its initial position to when the velocity is zero. Okay, basically they're saying from when t equals zero till when the velocity is zero, what's the distance traveled? Okay, so... Um, when t equals zero, my uh, where was what was um, my distance traveled? S times zero minus 0.5 times zero squared. Well, wh where's my location at this? If I plug in zero here and zero here, my location is zero meters, right? Okay. Well, when t equals 10. Um, we're going to fight, figure out the displacement. How far did it go from when t equals 0 to when t equals 10? So I'm going to plug in 10. So my function, when, when t equals 10, I should have put a t here, sorry, 0. Uh, let's just write it as s. The, the location is going to be So what I've done in my original function, instead of writing t, I'm replacing it with 10. Okay? So now I'm going to get the distance traveled is 100 minus, okay, 10 squared is 100, 100 times 0 0.5 is going to give me 50. So 100 minus 50 is going to give me 50. And what are what is S measured in? S is measured in meters. So uh, the displacement is going to be 50 meters. Okay, uh, watch this over again if you need some help. And there's some other really good examples in the textbook, too. Good luck, guys.